So for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our physical therapist, Sandra, and Sandra is reviewing a patient's medical record who is in the hospital for a right pelvic fracture. The patient has a history of hypercortisolism and persistent weight gain. Which of the following findings is the most consistent with the patient's medical record? So we have A, thickening of bone in the face and thorax. B, hyponatremia. C, hyperglycemia. And D is dehydration. All right, so let's knock this one out. Sandra, she's our PT, is reviewing a patient's medical record who's in the hospital for a right pelvic fracture. Now, I read that first sentence and I don't really see anything magical there. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, right? And I don't really feel like that's helping me out too much. Now, as I go to the second sentence, it says the patient has a history of hypercortisolism and persistent weight gain. Now, this is where I really got to slow up because if you want to win at the MPTE, you have to understand conditions like hypercortisolism. You have to. All right. And, and so I want you to slow up real quick. Think about this, please. What is hypercortisolism? What does that really mean? You should be saying that that's a hyperfunctioning of the adrenal gland, a.k.a. Cushing syndrome. Now, I know you remember that from PT school, am I right? Like you've heard the name at least. Hyperfunctioning of the adrenal gland, specifically the adrenal cortex. Now, why is this important? Like, why do we really need to know that? Well, we need to know that the adrenal cortex produces two major hormones. Two major hormones. One of them is cortisol. The other one is aldosterone. All right. And what I want to do before we even take this question any further, I need to explain to you a little bit about what that is and then we can knock it out. All right. So we said it was a hyperfunctioning of the adrenal cortex, hyperfunctioning. And so we have all this increase in cortisol that's making it into the bloodstream. Now, what is cortisol? It's a steroid hormone. It's a stress hormone. And what it does is it helps to prolong the stress response. All right. And so do we want to have prolonged stress? Do we want to have this high level of, um, you know, a steroid like in the blood for, for this longer period of time? No, we don't, because it's going to start having these degenerative effects on different parts of the body. All right. So that's one way and or one reason why we wouldn't want it. And another reason is it can start to have some really significant effects on the body's physiology, cardiovascular physiology, endocrine physiology. All right. So these are all negative things. Now. You have to also think about the other hormone that's secreted by the adrenal cortex. That's called aldosterone. And if you're not familiar with aldosterone, I'll be really brief. That is going to be a hormone that helps with the reabsorption of water and sodium. All right. So when this hormone is secreted into the bloodstream, it causes the kidneys to uh, stop draining the water to actually reabsorb it or retain more water. And it also tells the kidneys to also retain more sodium. All right, so those are two important hormones that you have to know, and they are going to be in excess. Now, it says persistent weight gain in that sentence as well, which is very true. Think about this. You have a lot of stress in your life, let's say. You have a lot of stress, a lot of these stress hormones that are circulating through the body. Does that patient tend to be more a healthy or do they tend to be more unhealthy? You'll say unhealthy, right? Do they tend to be typically more anorexic, slim, skinny, or do they tend to be very obese, right? Overweight. Which one do they tend to be? You would say they tend to be more obese, right? They tend to have that weight gain. This is all consistent with Cushing syndrome right now. It makes perfect sense. Now, I move on to the next sentence and it says, which of the following findings is the most consistent with the patient's medical history? So all I'm looking for is which of these answers is going to be consistent with Cushing syndrome. All right. So we have A, thickening of bone in the face and thorax. B is hyponatremia. C is hyperglycemia. And D is dehydration. Let's knock them out. So A, thickening of bone in the face and thorax. Well, this can kind of throw you off a little bit, especially if you have taken a practice exam before 
or you've read in the text, you know, the whole moon face thing, you might start to think, well, maybe that's because of thickening of a bone in the face. Maybe the, the increase in their thorax is because of thickening of bone. That is untrue. No, 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 no. A lot of times that's due to fluid retention or it's due to the fact that they're starting to gain more fat tissue or adipose tissue. All right, that's the reason why they start to get more of that moon face or they start to have more uh, tissue around the abdominal area or even the thorax. That is fatty deposits or adipose tissue that's developing there, okay? And so I don't expect thickening, thickening of bone. Actually, I expect the exact opposite. Patients who have Cushing syndrome, especially for a prolonged period of time, have osteoporosis, not thickening of bone. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate A for now. Does that make sense? We all on the same page? All right, let's look at B. B says hyponatremia. All right, so let's go back to what I was saying. I said that Cushing syndrome is a hyperfunctioning of the adrenal gland, right? The adrenal cortex. We also said there was two um, major hormones that were secreted. We said cortisol and aldosterone. Now, let's talk about aldosterone. We said aldosterone, what it does is it calls for the reabsorption of water and sodium. So the body starts to hold on to more of those, more water and hold on to more sodium. So what does that lead us into? Hypernatremia. Because natremia is sodium, right? So hypernatremia is what we would expect, not hyponatremia. That doesn't make sense. All right, that's the exact opposite of what we would expect. And so we can eliminate B. Let's look at C. C says hyperglycemia. Now, this is a really interesting one. You might be a little confused about hyperglycemia, but if we really think about it, we said that cortisol is a stress hormone, right? It prolongs the stress response. And in a sense, like, when your sympathetic nervous system is, is, is going, like, you know, that fight or flight, well, the only thing is that we're going to need more energy in order for you to keep running or for you to keep fighting. And where do we get that energy from? We don't get it necessarily from the sympathetic nervous system. We have to have some type of secondary system that's going to help to keep feeding you all of the the, the ATP and all of the, the sugars and all that stuff in order for you to continue to run, for you to continue to fight. So what system is that? Who does that? Guess who's a part of it? Cortisol. Okay? And so the more cortisol that you have in the blood, the more you start to produce glucose. And I shouldn't say produce it. You start to release this glucose from things like your liver. All right, you start to break down uh, through glucogenesis. You start to break that down and release the glucose into the bloodstream. And so uh, do I expect to have hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia with this patient? You should be saying to me, Kyle, hyperglycemia for sure. I expect to have increased sugar. So C makes sense. Let's look at D. Oh, and we should be able to eliminate D pretty easily, right? It says dehydration. Well, we just said that aldosterone is responsible for reabsorbing sodium and water. We have more water retention. We wouldn't expect our patient to be dehydrated. If anything, they're retaining more water. And so that would immediately eliminate D. Our final answer is hyperglycemia or increased sugar in the bloodstream. Let's freaking get it. Congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. For those of you who didn't, don't worry about it, baby. That's what, you know, these types of concepts can be very difficult if you don't understand the physiology behind it. I'm telling you that how to get these questions correct is for you to understand the pathology, Cushing syndrome, understand how we get it, what it is, and why are we getting these signs and symptoms? Don't just memorize a list. Try to figure out why is it that we're getting these symptoms? What does aldosterone do? What does cortisol do? And help yourself to understand it more. That way you don't have to start memorizing things. And you don't have to worry about always forgetting it by the time you get to the amputee.